Daddy, you go crazy. Tell us what that experience was like those four years. It, it was rough, man. But when I first when I first got there, the white shirt said somebody called and told him that I was coming. I figured it was my father that did that. Cause they was all Masons. When I get there, they was doing all that shit to me. You know what I'm saying? Then I had to shake his hand, you know, they know that you touch them, them guards at the jail. So he covered uh, to do what I was taught to do. And he's, he said, well, he took me to the side. He said, we're not gonna lock you up like that. You can walk around, you wanna go to the gym, you wanna work out, you wanna go in the yard. You know anybody here? I said, I don't know anybody right now. Let me look around. Then I seen Becker, the police that killed that homeless guy down on Van Buren that time. Okay. He was in there. Okay. So I seen him, we were talking. Then I seen another, about five other guys from Inglewood. And they was like, man, we've been locked up in here all day, every day. And so I went back to that white shirt. I said, why don't you let them out? I know them. So we was out every day for that whole year I was there. You know, and then I left there, I went to Shiny. That was the worst fucking prison, man. The motherfuckers fight every fucking day. Guys walk around with shit on. They all in the day room, just doing all type of shit, man, that you never want to see. Mm. I'm talking about people that you think that was, that was hard. No, they braiding niggas' hair and shit. All that, mm. I seen it. And I just looked at him. I just told him I'm gonna play that shit. I told told one guy, I said, I will kill you. I meant that shit. I said, I ain't got time for this shit in here. Don't ask me shit while I'm in here. Don't ask me when my out date. That's all they talk about, when your out date. Fuck an out date. You know, you worry about your own motherfucking shit. Get the fuck away from me. They selling cookies, pop, all type of bullshit in there. All day just bullshit, playing cards, they ain't trying to go to school, they ain't trying to learn shit. You know, nothing. I think I went to uh, Jacksonville too. Jacksonville, it was okay. It was a lot of Mexican there, they cooked. Everybody was cool in there. One and none of that bullshit there, man. But Shawnee was the, that was the- That was the, the worst year, not the four. Yeah, that's, fuck, they fight every fucking day in the lunchroom, fighting. Just for bullshit. Got all type of knives, nails. I don't know the fuck they get that shit from. But they were stabbing motherfuckers in there. It was just fucked up. They would lock the place down. We couldn't take no shower for weeks. Mm. They would throw your food up under the door and shit, man. Shit you didn't even want to eat, man. Right. They treated you real like shit in there. And then the white people, them white guards, they from the country. So they didn't give a fuck. They just talk, they try to make you do shit to them. So you get more time. Anything you do, they write a ticket on you. You get caught with anything like the, those pots that they cook with. Gas are altering the motherfucker, you know, so we can boil noodles and shit. They catch you doing that. You can get another year across the board. Damn. For, Trying for, to cook? Yeah, they weren't playing with you. They, yeah. They, yeah they, uh, assault, staff assault, any of that shit. You fuck with those women, you getting staff assault, that's two years across the board. It was a lot, man. There was one guard lady. Her name was Speedy. I'll never forget it. She was trying to get me to have sex with her. I thought, fuck that shit. I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of gals are doing it. Fuck that shit. You might be trying to set me up. You see what I'm saying? Because I didn't know if somebody was on the inside trying to do me and send her to me to make me stay in there longer. I wasn't doing it, man. I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Soon as I can, when my out day came, I had my shit packed. I was ready to roll, get the fuck away from out, out of that place, man. But you know, it was, it was just the whole, my whole life experience in that penitentiary, man. It was fucked up. You don't want to do it. It seemed like it's cool. You getting away, you living, but you don't know what you getting into when you go in there. It's, it's real rough, man. Stateville, when you, when you first leave, you, they take you back to Stateville. You go in there and it's fucked up. You don't want to stay in there. You'll be dead. You think the street's rough? They kill you in there. Cause the warden, all of them are part of that shit. They knock your ass off. If you're in there talking, getting in other people's business, that's why you can't be in nobody's shit. 
You go in there, do your time, work out, go to yard, go to school, and that's it. That's all you have to do to really make it, man. But I, I made it through that them four fucking years, man, and it, it really, it really bothered me to come out and try to start life over, and it's hard. Yeah. Don't nobody want to help you. They looking at you as a killer. You shooting people. That's how they look at us now. Anytime you try to go and get a job, you got anything on you, anything, we don't want to hire you because you don't look right. What a look got to do with us working? You know what I'm saying? No matter what you got on your body, as long as you perform in that job, that, that's all what matter to me. I don't care what you do, as long as you get, get it done. But now you can't do it, man. Nothing. People just got to judge you all the time. You don't look right. You look like you're going to rob me. You know, like I go in stores now. People look at me, you know. It's, it's just rough, man. Real rough. Can you tell us about the relationship you had with Fluky Stokes? Because we know him as like, like one of like, like the Chicago, one of Chicago OGs, original gangsters, you know? Yeah, but um, Fluky, he was, he was a cool guy, man. He wasn't like people say he was. He always gave you money. You know, if you needed anything, we ride around all 47th Street, 63rd, and his son Wimp, he was cool. They weren't like they people saying they was doing things in the street like that, but they was all about making money. That's what it was all about. None of that killing people, all that. They, people just put things out there like that yeah. to make him look like he was real tough. But I drove around, we went to different places, 79th, it was a restaurant at 79th and Jeffrey. You drop him off over there. He hang in there. We just ran the street. Everybody, it was a lot of soldiers, you know, doing different things in the street. Yeah. And, and that's how we came up making money, being around the guy. He was never like that. You know, he gambled a lot. He had a lot of money. Anything you needed, he done it for you. His daughter, Sabrina, all those, all those people, man, they was, they was always cool. All down on 47th Street. We just did a lot, man. Yeah. Everybody soul man to make money to make a living mm -hmm. we have to do it so that's, that's that's my life man just trying to make it in inglewood mm -hmm. if you didn't do something you just fail you have to got to make money some type of way and, and and that's what i did man but i stopped at a certain point but a lot of a lot of other big drug dealers i done been around all we did was made money you know, that's it. I made a lot. Doing that, that shooting, I had like 500000 in that Jaguar. They took that money. Mm. I had it in the back trunk part. Really? And it, yeah, it was going. Cash? In, huh? Cash, cash. They took it. And um, some of the other police mentioned it. I'm like, how would y'all know I had it in there if one of y'all didn't take the shit? But they took my car and put it in a fucking pound. So they ripped the whole car apart. See somebody. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Bill. So we talking about half a mil. Yeah. Cash. Yeah. I'm making money, man. I was. Yeah, you was getting it on. I was real smart, man. <laughs> so, you know. You was getting it on. One other thing, I was hiding money in the cemetery. Yeah, See, man. people ain't that yeah, ain't up on that. Yeah, no. Some of my family, I would dig up the, the stone. You know, they had a stone there. I go out there on a Sunday when they when the Cemetery crowded. I would walk at me one of them little shovels and sit there in the chair and I'd be digging right there. I put a blanket around the chair and I'd be digging. Don't nobody see me what I'm doing. I'm just digging until I get down far enough. And I'll put the money in the bags. I double up the Ziploc bags and put the money down there and put the dirt back on it and put the grass back. That's how I hid a lot of my money. So I would tell, I used to tell guys, had your money in the cemetery. Motherfucker never, they never figured this shit out. And I said, if you're gonna deal with somebody, deal some drugs, meet them at the cemetery. Cause you're gonna see the ass come in and you're gonna see them leave out. Get there two hours early. Be Make sure your family buried there so if the police come, I'm here to visit my fucking family. Fuck you talking about. But you, are, I would always put shit at another grave site. So I'm watching this motherfucker if he come get it. You see what I'm saying? So. You can never tell me you didn't get it because I'm watching your ass the whole time and I will leave. 
you never know I was there. Coach Gaz just called me, you come, you come, and I would never show up. Mm -hmm. you, you set me up. You know, so, I told one of my friends, he got set up the same way. The guy kept calling about 10 times. I said, don't fucking go. I said, do not go. Oh man, it ain't nothing. He got up there, he locked his ass up. Police waiting on him. The dude was in the backseat of the police car. Locked his ass up. But he went to court, they beat it cause he didn't have enough shit for them really charging. But I told him not to go. But I was real smart, like car batteries. I used to put the shit in them dummy car batteries. You know, we used to play the music back in the day, had the two batteries. I don't know if you remember back in the day, we had two car batteries in them old Chevys, the 76 Chevys. Yeah. I used to hook cables from the motor to the, to the batteries and, you know, put the shit in there and drive around. Okay. Cause you never, you never see the shit in there. Yeah. You open the hood and look, you see two batteries. I got music. That's what these batteries for. They would never fuck with them, but I had them tightened down. Because when you look at the old school Chevy, you ever look at the 76 Chevy, they had a bolt, like some of the car now, they hold the battery down. I would bolt them down. So you'd never look. I was real smart at it. I never, some guys used to put it in the speaker, but I said, you're gonna get caught. Cause they gonna pull them fucking speakers down. Them big boxes in the back, they were hiding. So that's the dumbest shit you can ever do. You know, and then them compartments they was making, they gonna find that shit. They gonna take your car in, they gonna rip that motherfucker apart, they gonna find that shit. Your ass gonna, you gonna get 10 years off the top. You gotta hide that shit another way. I used to tell them all the time, there's other ways to hide that shit. And they'll never find it. And I, I know where, I used to put it in the vents. I used to take the vent out and I put a string on it. I always use a black string. And I would get some crazy glue and I would stick that shit to the side. So you just, you won't see that black string. So when I want to get it out, I just pull the black string from the part, pull it up, and I get through, I drop it back down through the holes. You'll never see it. You just got to be smart and doing That's how we moved a lot, of, a lot of drugs. We was real smart at it, man. I always learned from the top and the Mexican guys, some of my real top guys in Mexico, they taught me a lot of shit. Just messing. Yeah, them, some of my friends right now today, they still doing shit, okay. you know, but we real tight. You know, I can get anything from it, but I, I kind of stop. But I can, I can get back rich right now if I wanted to, because they'd give it to me if I call them. But I just, I just don't trust a lot of my people. They be telling me to get it, but fuck that. You're going to tell on me. That's why, I don't, that's, that's why I don't do it. They, they grin in your face, man. I don't trust they motherfucking ass no more. After what I went through, I don't trust none of them at all. They ain't right. DJ, you go crazy!